Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking about the Universal Arduino Telegram bot library that is available on the Arduino Library Manager or on my GitHub. I think it's a great way of interacting with your Arduino from anywhere in the world with minimal setup. To get started, let me first show you some of the things you can do with this library. Using the library, we can send commands to the device, such as toggling the onboard LED, changing the color of the RGB LED, the device can send us messages, we can query the status of a sensor, and we can also receive push notifications. For those wondering what Telegram is, it is an instant messaging service very similar to WhatsApp. It has some additional features such as a desktop application, but the main feature that we're interested in is the bot API. This allows you to programmatically interact with users directly in their app. In order to use the library, you're going to need a supported board. Any ESP8266 based boards should work fine, such as the Wemos D1 Mini or the Node MCU board. These boards cost less than $5, have Wi-Fi built in, and can be programmed directly from the Arduino IDE. Any devices that use the Wi-Fi 101 library should also work, such as the MKR1000 and the Wi-Fi 101 shield. The Ethernet shield and the old Wi-Fi shield do not work because they do not support SSL. To get started using the library, you need a bot token. After you've installed the app, search for a user called Botfather and follow the instructions to set up a bot. After you've created your bot, you will receive a bot token that you will need to use in your sketch. Before we go over the sketch from the demo earlier in the video, let's first take a look at how it's all wired up. I'm using a Wemos D1 Mini, an RGB LED, a tactile button, and an LDR. The RGB LED is wired to pins D0, D5, and D6, and has a 1K resistor for each pin. One side of the button is connected to pin D7 with a 10k pull down resistor. The other side is connected to 3.3 volts. And finally, one side of the LDR is connected to 3.3 volts. The other side is connected to A0 with a 100k pull down resistor. Now let's take a look at the sketch. The first thing I'm doing is including the Universal Telegram bot library. I'm then including the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library, the Wi-Fi client secure library, this is the SSL client. I'm not specifically including the Arduino JSON library, but it does need to be installed for the Universal Telegram library to work. I'm just going to cover the Telegram specific parts of the sketch, but if you have any questions on any other parts of the sketch, please just leave a comment. The next thing I need to do is initialize the Telegram bot. This is the bot token I received from the bot fodder. This is the SSL client. And I need to pass these into the constructor of the bot. I'm also going to set a delay of how often I want to check Telegram for new messages. I have it set to one second. When you send the bot a message, it has the context of who to reply to. But if you want to send an alert, like for example when I press the button, you need to set a chat ID to send the message to. This is the chat ID of a group I created, and I got the ID by adding my ID bot to the group. You can also just print the chat ID using the library in the serial console. One thing that isn't Telegram specific, but is important, is that when we're listening for the button click, that we attach an interrupt rather than just checking it in the loop. This is because we will be communicating with Telegram and if the button press happened during this, we wouldn't catch it. Inside the interrupt method, we'll set a volatile flag to be true and then we'll handle the button press when we get to it. Now let's take a look at the loop. The first thing I'm doing is checking for the button press flag and then I'm going to handle the button pressed. I'm just going to send a message and then set the flag to false. In this section of the code we're checking do we have any new messages from Telegram. 
we call bot.get updates and we pass it the last message ID that it received plus one. This is so the bot knows that we've already handled previous messages. This will be optional in the future, but for now it's required. What it returns is the number of new messages you've received. And while that is still not zero, you have new messages from Telegram. So we're handling the new messages in this method and we'll take a look at it in a second. You can keep checking get updates to see do you have any new messages. Now let's take a look at the handle new messages method. Handle new messages takes the number of new messages received from get updates. Get updates is currently hard coded to only return one message, but this will be made optional in the future. The messages are stored in an array and they are struct objects. The chat ID is who the message came from. The text is what was contained in the message. The from name is if the user has a name set, for example mine set to Brian. In the video from earlier, on my phone I had buttons corresponding with all the commands. This is called a reply keyboard. When a user to this bot sends the options command, the bot will reply with a keyboard. The format of the keyboard is an array of arrays. So the first element of the outer array is the top row. And inside that then is each option. So as you can see here, I have three options and that would correspond with three buttons on the top row. You can have as many rows as you want. I have only one option in the next array, so I have only one button, and the same for the last one. Clicking the buttons will send that message to the bot. Commands don't need to have the slash in front of them, but they become clickable in the chat if they do. When a user first interacts with a bot, it will be prompted to send a start command. This is a good place to let the user know all the options that are available to it on the bot. The last thing to show here is when I covered the LDR, it sent me a message to say a low LDR reading was detected. I'm doing this by just checking the value of the LDR, seeing is it less than 600, and then just sending the message. This could be done for basically any sensor. I do recommend implementing a cooldown on this feature as I turned off the lights last night and the bot was very eager to let me know how dark it was. For more information or examples, check out the library's GitHub page. There's a table of the different features and its corresponding examples. If you have any issues, please use the GitHub issue tracker or if you have any questions, Join the Arduino Telegram library group chat and we'll be happy to help. If you have any feedback on the library or this video, please leave a comment below. Thanks a lot.